just better overall because not really much happens top lane at the moment, uh, only with a gank. So let's talk uh, a couple more questions about Millennium as a team then, because 2-2 two and two in the Super Week is not bad at all, obviously, but you guys are hanging at the bottom of the table. Is relegation something that's, that's really haunting you right now? So, um, not yet. Uh, we still have eight games, and um, we will just try our best. Katowice is still in front of us as well for, for, for the team spirit and stuff. And our mood is pretty good. We are still uh, in a good mood. We are funny, and um, we just enjoy it. And yeah, our goal is to go definitely in the top six in the eight games uh, to just go playoffs and show, show everyone what we can. It's going to be a tough task. You guys are quite low down the table. I'm glad you mentioned Katowice. It will be taking place next week. Now, you guys ended up winning I Am Sao Paulo. You're going to be taking part at Katowice. We've seen the groups. What do you guys think? Uh, how are you feeling going into that tournament? Oh, we feel good. Um, of course, we won Sao Paulo. And we, I think it's really good, this uh, format of best of three always. And even um, there with the loser bracket and stuff like that, I think it would be really cool, with especially groups like that with KTB and IG. So, um, me personally, I'm just looking forward for KTB. I just want to play versus them and, uh, yeah, beat them. Going to be a fantastic matchup. Congratulations here on your win and good luck next week, of course. And now we're going to send it back over to the caster desk where Team D&D &D are ready to bring you our next game. Thank you very much, Shox and Quickshot. I am Lee D-Man Smith, and alongside me is Martin Deficio Lunger. And of course, we are ready for another El Clasico. Don't worry, I'll keep butchering that name. It's fine. <laughs> I can live with it. So, next up, a big game. It's Fnatic facing off against SK Gaming. And this is a matchup that is currently tied at one apiece with Fnatic picking up a win in week one over SK Gaming while they took their revenge during week five. But both these teams have been through a lot since then. Fnatic yesterday, while well, they looked in full control, dominating both the Super Hot Crew and Millennium with pick and poke comps. And the Randis poke combo against Millennium, it was completely built around the Nidalee pick for Xpeke. And Fnatic, they really showed perfect rotation, objective control in both the games, picking up all the dragons. And they played very safe mid, a uh, very safe mid game without any chance of actually losing the lead. And overall, everyone from Fnatic was performing yesterday. Just the fact that they showed both the pick combo and the poke combo and made them both work perfectly really showed to me that Fnatic is back. And we really do have to highlight Cyanide after his perfect performance against Millennium yesterday. Yeah, he got all the dragons, he was part of so many kills, and he was always one step ahead of Aranir. And in general, Sanad, he's been playing really well. Even when Fnatic actually struggled in, in the last few weeks, he was always strong. And I like the trend of Fnatic having Source with Teleport, because he also managed to do well in his lane on both Malphite and Trundle. And then he had full focus on split pushing, which really seemed to favor him. And I did just speak to Cyanide before they go on the stage. And he's like, if I do bad today, it's because my stomach, man, I'm not feeling good. And it's like, okay, getting your excuses in already, are we? <laughs> SK Gaming, though, well, they came into Super Week picking up wins and climbing that table. They won against Millennium on day one and in a controlled game. But yesterday versus Gambit, they got destroyed. It wasn't good. However, of course, they played Rocket earlier today and were back in form. Everyone was focusing hard on Freddy in that top lane, while the rest of the team, well, they did their job. They took down turrets and dragons with ease. They pretty much controlled the whole map. And if we go back to the game against Gambit, we had Diamond there. He was just everywhere in the early game. And despite SK actually putting up a very good fight, he still managed to counter gang, in it, counter -gang everything. And he also helped out Alex on the bank whenever it was needed. And Jesus, he played set for the first time, and while he was very good in the laning phase, he got overconfident and he tried some risky plays and it didn't work for him. And it also meant that SK just fell too far behind and they simply lost to this very strong Gambit team. And then against Rocket, we saw SK Gaming taking full advantage of all the focus Yankers actually put onto Freddy, because Jesus and the bot lane were both winning their lanes and they were controlling the rest of the map. And Svenskern then, he just focused on counter ganging in top lane, getting some good kills for him up there. And again, Freddy, he did die, but he also picked up all the farm he needed. And once he picked up the Blade of the Rune King and the Trinity Force, SK Gaming really started to turn on the power and just beat Rocket in every single small fight they had, took the Baron and won the game. Yeah, easy, easy match in the end for SK yeah. Gaming against Rocket. And they got the better of them. They're 3-0 up over Rocket. It's crazy score for them because everybody else is struggling versus Rocket. Let's check out those starting lineups, though. On the blue side, it will be Fnatic. And that means Soaz is in the top lane, Cyanide in the jungle, Peke in the mid lane, Reckless as AD carry, and Yellowstar on support. 
And on the red side, we have SK Gaming with Freddy in the top lane. We have Svenskern in the jungle. Jesus is the mid laner. Candy Panda is the AD carry. And of course, Enraided the support. So Picks and Bands about to get underway. This is the El Clasico, as we like to call it. Generally are fairly active games. This could be different, but we'll see how it's going. What are we expecting from the bands? Well, Nidalee, both mid laners have lost a player. Yeah. And we Fnatic have been using this poke combo, very safe play style. Could be taken away from Pekka. Caitlyn alongside Nidalee as well. Of course, Caitlyn has been a key thing mm -hmm. for, for Reckless with it. Top lane wise, we have a lot of different picks actually at the moment. We have the Aatrox, of course, with Freddy. Mm -hmm. We've seen the Malphite now also from Soas. Very good Malphite. Very yeah. good ones. There's a lot of different options here, jungle wise. Evelyn wants for Sanat. He actually said in the interview he didn't really enjoy playing it. He didn't like it too much. So he's maybe falling back on Elise, Elise and whatever he has of all these kind Speaking of Speaking of that Malphite, I got to speak to Soaz yesterday about that Malphite. I was like, so Trinity Force, so go in the way of Wicked. He's like, no, Trinity Force is a great item on Malphite. Just not the first item. Yeah, You've got to get that, that fire cape in first. That is the key. You need some tankiness first. You need some armor. You need some HP. Then you can go in for your damage route. And that's what he did wisely enough. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Picks and pounds about to get underway. I'm wondering, Ziggs, Lulu, something like that, maybe. Jezus likes these long range farm championships. We saw him playing Lulu. He got Lulu up against Rockat earlier today. And he has been taken away. That's a crucial part of the Candy Panda N rated combo when they go for that Vayne. So that's probably going to take Vayne off the plate. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Annie also for Enraided has been one of his most played supports, and he's always been doing so well when it comes to the hard engage. Of course, we see Castle and Ban here against Pekka. Nobody's making the mistakes we saw yesterday. <laughs> Not going to let that one through this time. Pantheon taken away from Svenska in a way that's almost become a staple diet against SK Gaming. And the thing with the Pantheon here, we've actually seen Fnatic focus more on Wukong. So I could see them now go for Wukong, take away the Pantheon, make sure Svenska can have these very aggressive things. And we actually had Candy Panda talking about this any Pantheon setup where they always go down to the bot lane, pop the tables under the turret to the enemy, and then Svenskan comes down with the gank. Well, there's the Lulu taken away. This does mean Ziggs and Nidalee are still out there. And Fnatic are one of those teams that tend to lock in the mid laner first. So Fnatic are having their choice of what they're going to take away. It's going to be the Kale, which is N rated has been running as support lately. Yeah, so they actually make sure you. No kill mid here and obviously no kill support for Enraided. We actually saw the lane with them, how strong it was, as long as you can always push it up to the turret. Very hard to gank because you're so mobile. The blank gang, uh, the blank ban against someone like Peggy, really like that. Yeah, well we saw obviously Alexic running it against Jezus to great effect yesterday, pretty much destroying that SK comp. But Cyanide has got the say this time around, it's the Evelyn first pick for Fnatic. And actually despite him saying he didn't really enjoy playing Evelyn, still taking Devlin away from Svenskern here, so much pressure early game. And the way for SK to counter this, unless they can predict the movement, counter ganker, they need to get inside the jungle of Fnatic, get some deep wards there so they can see Evelyn when she's clearing the camps, get some vision, know where she is, and then also play safe from there. But Evelyn is so annoying to deal with due to her stealth. Now Trundle available as well, not Renekton currently being held for SK Gaming. We'll see whether Freddy chooses to stick with that one. Is that a been playing a different bunch of champions, as you mentioned, the Aatrox, the Jax as well, earlier on today. So we'll see which one he does choose. Renekton on that table means it's generally the first pick. Renekton is just a lane bully, that's the thing. We actually see the Nidalee possibly coming in here. The one we talked about could be banned away, but now SK don't want to risk Fnatic having this poke combo with Nidalee. So to take it early on, 4GS is a very good Nidalee player. Also LeBlanc is gone, which is one of the champions who can actually kill Nidalee in the lane. And with the Renekton, you will have the pressure up top lane. You will win this lane as long as you play it properly and as long as your jungler is ready to counter gank if something happens. So let's see if Reckless and Yellowstar want to get their lane locked in because there's nothing for SK Gaming showing just yet. Or will it be a Peke? Will he go without Ziggs? What would you go against the Nidalee? I mean, you won't kind of want a bit of range to go with it. Well, there's different options. Assassin-wise, you can actually get a lot of farm against Nidalee because she's a weak laner. Gragas a bunch of times as Gragas well. yeah. works against Nidalee. Hard to get a kill on her, but still, you can always farm and you can actually set up fights with the Gragas later on. You scale well into the late game, provide both some wave control and also a lot of siege potential. So there's a lot of options because Nidalee, she's a weak laner until she hits the level 6 point where she can really start doing something. So there's a lot of options for Fnatic, actually. Will we see that number one pick combo of Lucian Thresh for SK Gaming here? Candy Panda now has gone with a bunch of different AD carries. Hasn't tended to go with the, the standard that most people run with. You can see the Caitlyn, of course, for Reckless there. And Trundle in that top lane for Soaz. 
And funny enough, actually, if you look at the SK side once again, they're actually picking both solo laners as the first two picks. So they're giving them away, save the bot lane, save the jungle pick. It's simply meant for Fnatic. They could take their top laner now, save the rest of their picks, possibly something like a hard engage support if we see a Vayne from SK side. And also, they could leave, obviously, the mid lane pick for Peke. So they have no idea for SK side what would be played there. But the Trundle against the Renekton. A bit hard for Trundle early on, but he will outscale him and he will become very strong. And we know Source, he loves to build Blade of the Rune King and just stay in this lane and try and beat Renekton. And speaking of that Pokemon, we did talk about the Caitlyn going alongside the Nidalee. Lucian does almost as good as job, not quite, but it is that Lucian Thresh combo, the number one pick combo in Europe so far. It's just overall such a strong lane. It's very hard to deal with. You have a good damage, you have good range, you have. You're very safe, you have your dash, you have the lantern. It's generally very hard to do anything against this lane. And also the fact they can push early on, get level two, push down the enemy, uh, the enemy dual lane to their turret and then just start denying them CS. So overall, very strong and also obviously Lucian scales well, well into the late game. The same goes also for Caitlyn though. Not more Ganna, maybe thoughts about. We saw one of those big plays by Yellow Star at the top of the show. And it was all about Yellow Star landing that dark binding and the help he had. Ari maybe well locked in here. We haven't seen Peke playing this one for a long time. Like I'm trying to think when it was the last time. Of course, we saw Shifter playing it in the North American, making some big, big plays against Team Solo mid for Costa. And he actually killed Bjergsen in the mid lane. Mm -hmm. 1v1 against the Gragas. This time around, against Nidalee with Ari. Nidalee will most likely be bringing Barrier, making it a bit harder to kill. But you have so much pressure, and you can also push out the lane and then roam. Together with someone like Sanat, who will be stealthed, go down to either the bottom lane or the top lane and set something up. How was Elise going all the way through? Crazy. Well, Evelyn, Evelyn was first picked in there, they just didn't need it. So Elise, one of the number one jungler picks, which actually Cyanide does favor heavily. So taking away each other's jungle champion. Yeah, I definitely feel the Evelyn pick for Fnatic is simply to take it away from Svenskran. It's not to say our jungler lost this champion, he's so good on it, because obviously Elise and Wukong have been the main junglers for Cyanide. But yeah, it's simply meant for SK, they could delay this pick, they could just take whatever else they want. That's why also we saw the two soul laners first, they really wanted to make sure that Nidalee was in their hands, and they didn't have to deal with this very annoying poke. Oh. Overall, Fnatic and SK have seemingly got the champions they require. Both actually got quite a lot of poke as well. What do you, how do you see this one falling? Well, looking at Fnatic's combo, it's a bit of everything. Mm -hmm. They have some counter engage with the Morgana, obviously also the Caitlyn. They have some poke with Caitlyn. And also Ari, you have this pick potential, you have this all-in potential. So they have pretty much everything in the combo, but nothing fully focused on like heavy engage or heavy siege. So they have pretty much everything combined. SK side, obviously when you have Nidalee, you focus on poke. You want to poke before you actually start the fight because you don't want to go straight into it. And then they have this very tanky Renekton, they have Elise who can obviously go tanky. And then with Lucian, he can do pretty much every role you want him to. So again, also for SK actually, they have a bit of everything. And keeping your eyes on them summoner spells, so as it's got teleport as well. We'll see how that one works out. Our players are poised to get this game rolling, which is a good time to check the numbers on lollysports.com. The voting has been picked, and it is 72% in favor of Fnatic. That's a big vote. Big surprise, actually, because SK Gaming have been looking very good. They are a strong team at the moment, so we should give them a little more credit, I think. Yeah, I mean, that's just simply the Fnatic fan base is huge, that's for it sure. It is, definitely. And of course, as a reminder, you can get tickets here these teams here at the studios in Cologne, Germany. You'll find the link at the top of the page over at lolesports.com if only I could say the name of the site. So take a look and come join us. So we need to have a look during this game. Can Fnatic actually go to late game with this combo? Trundle will outscale Renekton. I think Evelyn, I would at least prefer Evelyn late game compared mm -hmm. to an Elise because you have so much pressure, you have good engage potentials. And also we have obviously R against Nidalee goes kind of both ways. You want to poke in the Lila game, but Ari's all in is also very strong. And then you obviously have the Caitlyn and Morgana going into team fights, going into the late game. Very, very strong champions. So Fnatic, I see it going in their favor if you go to the real late game part, but SK they definitely have the tools to win the game before that. See how these lane phases work. Both these teams are capable of coming back if they lose the lane phase. They've definitely shown it. SK Gaming have shown a number of times that they can make the game go long if they need to. But I feel they're going to try and push some pressure onto Fnatic. Fnatic themselves, while well, they're 2-1 in Super Week, as are SK Gaming. So both looking to try and make it a decent record. While well, the opposition, of course, Fnatic have managed to turn it around a little bit. They managed to keep themselves 
relevant. They were in danger of really sliding away for a long period of time. They went about that eight-game losing streak. It's not something they wanted. Definitely not, but they've been doing a good job coming back from this one, and they show some confidence signs, and they have actually been very strong as a team. And then we just, in this game around, though, we have to notice, oh, who got you onto Reckless? Reckless getting caught out here. Is it going to be enough? They're going to try to put a lot of damage on him. They will see him going in the bush here. Can he pan him? May well follow through on this one. The Ignite is down. Is it going to be enough damage? I'm not too sure he's going to be safe from this one. Didn't manage to land it in there. So he does back away. Reckless is safe for now. But SK Gaming getting some deep wards in there. The rest of the team are lining themselves out. And Jezus, of course, has landed one of those spears on Peke. You can see Peke taking some damage away from them. Summoner spells, nothing too major there. No barrier was used. We do see Unrated, of course, with that Ignite was burned, but Practice didn't panic. He was pretty much safe. So Doran's blade item for everybody. Doran's rings for the mid lane, Doran's shields for the top lane, supports. We do see Cyanide starting off with the blue. And of course, we also have a pause here. So we're just saying, looks like it's reckless, actually. He's just saying, this, this doesn't seem right. I had to back to my base before the minions got there. So I think he's just wondering, get guy, referee, referee, he's not allowed to do this. He's not allowed to try and get first blood of me at the start of the game. I think he's maybe giving a little bit of talk. Man, we'll see how it works out for him, Reckless. He's looking a little bit nervous, I've got to be honest here, Reckless. Seriously, with that referee alongside him, we'll see how it works out for them. At the moment, though, we are just waiting for Reckless to sort that out. We're not too sure what the issue is, whether it's a client restart. I'm guessing with the referee looming and nobody really going for any pieces of equipment. There we go. A summoner has reconnected. We can see them, and they have got themselves back in the game. Any moment now. Any moment. So looking at the early stages of the game, we don't see too much. We have standard lanes, 2v2, of course. And we just have to pay attention to Evelyn early on. Will we see Sana put some focus onto the top lane, try and help out Trundle get a good start here with the teleport, of course, against the Ignite from Renekton. So it can be very scary for Source if he's left alone. Oh. Reckless is still waiting for something and hovering his ear off, so we're not going to give anything away for him. But uh, we should maybe mention, talk about that Soas teleport, because this is a big difference, a big difference between the two top laners. Freddy is either going to have to look to interrupt it or run very quick. So basically what you want to do as Renekton, obviously you push the lane down to the turret all the time. You make sure that he's pressured down. You can actually dive him even if he drops low. And then if a dragon is about to come up or if you want to contest the dragon, you start moving as Renekton. Obviously Trundle, he can stay in the lane with his teleport and just teleport down if needed. But that's where Renekton is shoving him out, moving down towards the dragon, and then he joins the team that way. And late game wise, having this teleport is very, very strong for Fnatic because it means they can always split push and still join in for the fights. And SK don't have that option. Oh, N-rated does actually finally land it. I cancelled the uh, attack animation now, which is entirely possible, especially as Thresh is very easy to do as Thresh, actually, because it's quite a long animation. It's a very long, very slow animation, actually. You do hit pretty hard, though, when you actually decide to land your auto-attack due to your E, due to the scaling up there, so you have a lot of damage early on with it, especially if you want physical damage runes. Keep your eye on Freddy. He has been going that triple Doran's build, which I noticed pretty much everyone has started to adjust to now in that top lane. It's basically saying lane dominance and it's saying I want to make sure that even if I get ganked I can actually either turn it around or at least make it away safe because you get so much early HP and also early power it is basically just very strong for the lane and getting the farm and we should actually expect to see Source do the same because he often plays to win the lane. Well, Sven Skoen's coming looking he's coming in towards his bush there is no wall placement there which is why we see in SK letting them back up a little bit here for Lennon Reckless and Yellow Star forcing them back slowly going in there Gets the hook on towards Yellow Star. Well, Sven's going to show himself very early this time around. He has got that cocoon, remember. Not going to land it. it Flash from Yellow Star, but Sven's going to take him very low here. A lot of damage going down on him. The Ignite is running. I'm not sure it's going to quite be enough, though. He should be able to get away from this one. I actually like the fact that Sven's going went in to try and force the Flash away from, from Yellow Star. He did get caught by the Binding, though, so he was forced to have to back off himself. But every single game, he's ganking the bottle in first. At level 3, he goes down there. Sana actually trying to sneak in and see if he can find him. Yeah, he was hoping he'd gone further up by that tower, but he actually recalled right next to it. So Sinai not going to get in there, but he will steal away the white. And we need to see here again, Sinai, he's been farming. He want to get a few levels before doing anything. Oh, Binding actually almost catching on to Candy Panda. 
Yeah, he dashed actually in almost in the same direction, which was not ideal. Sinai now making his move down this river, looking towards it, and Candy Panda will certainly be the target. Oh. Darkwine in again, goes through the goalpost, doesn't manage to land on an N-rated or Candy Panda. If they landed, they would have forced the flash, maybe even gotten the kill, but Sinai, he's still sticking around. Candy Panda is actually down to 50%. And the Lantern is now on cooldown. Yeah, he's going to take that Lantern. He dashes away as well. There's a good play on Sinai. There's a good return damage here. And Rated in trouble. He's going to turn it back around. Candy Panda trying to keep them at bay. But that was a really good counter. And Sinai, he's licking his wounds. A lot of action here in the bot lane early on from the junglers. And actually both the junglers, same result. They drop low, have to back off, have to recall to base. Svenskan now, he was the first one to gank. He's now continuing farming. While Sinai, he has to go back. He's falling a little bit behind, but it's not too much here and not an issue. <laughs> <laughs> so I was doing a little dance, happy there. He's just been back and got himself a chain vest and teleported back in towards that top lane and dances around for Freddy, saying, it's your turn, Freddy, you go back and buy. And that's one of the benefits from teleport early on, because you can actually drop low, you can use all your mana, recall to the base and then teleport in without losing too much. So he's using the teleport early on to the full advantage. Of course, if there is a dragon fight now, which we shouldn't expect, he can join in. Heavy pressure from Panana, of course, in this bottom lane. This is due to Cyanide. This is showing his presence down here. Candy Panda very low, getting away from that dark binding and rated, taking it and for the AD carry, but they will clear out this wave. And in terms of far between them, it's only 5 CS difference. But look how much pressure Fnatic is putting onto SK when they actually shove the wave all the way up to the turret. Yellowstar is trying to fire out the binding. If they actually land onto Candy Panda, they will force a summon from him. And that's very scary for him, and it makes it a lot harder for him to actually get the CS he wants to under the turret. So Triple Doran's items have been picked up by Freddy. We'll see how that develops up against that chain vest of Soaz. Mid laners are both returned as well. And actually the Chalice was picked up by Jessas, but Peke went the opposite route for the Athenes. And notice and one thing here. Bigger. Notice here, we actually talked earlier about how you need to ward against Evelyn. There's a ward at the wolf camp. Svenskan, he walked by, it, not being stealth, spotted out. I mean, Cyanide, of course, he was spotted out and they pinged it so they know Evelyn is in this top area. And that's very good ward placement from SK. And then going to top lane wise, Chain West early on from Source, I like it. It's the standard route against Renekton. You want to stop some of his early game damage, and the Chain West is the best option for it. Cyanide. Coming round and again spotted out, this time by the SK Pink Ward. Cyanide won't spot that one, so they know exactly where he's just been, where he's warded, where he's backed away. So Jess is feeling safe, Freddy feeling relatively safe. He knows he's actually close by, and look at that, they really are just pinging the exact route the Cyanide is taking. It's such a smart play. Freddy, of course, he's very overextended, but he is level 6, so he will be able to at least try and survive. If a gank should happen, there's not enough CC to bring actually from Fnatic's side in a gank before Sana is level 6 himself. Well, he's baiting this one out. Svenskone is coming over as well, so they actually want to try and force a play. Svenskone's just hit level 5 as well. Freddy and Soaz are going at it just up the side there. Svenskone about to come around the side. They're just trying to bait. They know Cyanide is nearby. He's trying his best to bait this one out. Still holding on to that Dominus. There's the Dominus. There's the Cocoon. Lands on Cyanide. Cyanide expertly played there. Repel out from Svenskeren. Not going to get close enough. He does go towards Soaz. Spear comes across from Jezus. Lands in there. Svenskeren taking low because Peke comes in. And first blood goes for Fnatic. And the fact that Svenskeren didn't have his flash meant he couldn't actually join in instantly as he landed a cocoon. There was also a ward on him. So Fnatic knew that SK was trying to bait this fight out. Very good play. And Peke comes around, picks up the first blood. Can he stop this blue buff? Well, Cyanide is nearby if they need to smite it away, but they want to try and land it with a spear. They started it off, they've not got a ward position, so they don't really know the exact spot of it. This one won't go to Peke. So the very smart ward placement again from Source, very experienced because he knew he was pushed down, he knew there was a chance he would get dived. And now hook on to Yellowstar. Hook on Yellowstar, will they follow it through? They do get a little fly on there and just a little burst of damage from Candy Panda, but Reckless is still applying that pressure on towards Candy Panda. He's simply just doing a very good job using Caitlyn as this lane bullet that she is. Always poking away onto SK with the long range. And obviously Yellowstar, he's just hammering out the bindings every single time he has the chance. And if he lands it, you get a lot of poke. You can also put down your trap with Caitlyn. And so you bind it, then you're trapped afterwards. That's a lot of CC and a lot of damage you will take. That was a little check there from Jezus through the spear to the red buff. And actually Svenskone will know that that red buff is up. His blue buff himself was just warded out here. So Svenskone is going to get watched out by this one. They're already pinging it out, so they know the position. Not sure if they're going to be able to counter it. Well, despite actually Svenskone dying up here for the first spot, he's still slightly ahead of XP compared to Cyanide. So if they should meet again for a fight, he will be able to do a lot of damage towards him. But before, we actually saw very good rotation and movement from Fnatic to counter this bait from SK.
Well, I'm sure they'll meet again. Don't know where, don't know when, but some sunny day it will happen. Sven Skurin goes in towards that dragon. He, of course, on Elise, can tank out this dragon. Using those little critters that he's got alongside him. And this will be SK taking the dragon. Oh, will it? Cyanide comes in. The culling comes on. Yellowstar hooked in there. He's going to try and back away from us. So on the Ignite is running. Vanishes to the dark, binding on towards N-rated. But the dragon, a dragon, sorry, is going to go to SK Gaming. And very good move from SK because Peggy was actually recalled to the base. So they knew he wasn't there. And also, due to the fact that they didn't actually have a pink wall, so it could be a risky start, but simply because they knew they, were, they had four members to the three members of, of uh, Fnatic, felt safe, took it. And we talk about how Elise can have this objective control, this dragon control early on, because she's so good at taking them down, she's so good at getting the kill onto them with her execute and a smite. She's also very tanky when it comes to tanking them. Yeah, and th this is why Elise is one of those top favored champions. We heard, uh, I think it was, it was actually Cyanide earlier on today that was uh, talking about it. Uh, yesterday, sorry. Saying that uh, it was, yes, Fnatic versus Millennium, wasn't it? Yeah. So talking about how RNA had no chance at really beating him out in that smite fight because he could easily just Q, get them fangs along with that smite. So he's always going to have much more damage. And that's the thing with Elise, you don't really have a weak point because you bring, you have a CC, you have some good single target damage, good dragon control, you're strong pretty much throughout the entire game. So Elise just is very overall safe champion and very good. And so he's dancing away again. He's dancing, he's happy in the top lane, it seems. He's a, he's a player that actually doesn't appreciate tanks much, but it was just bait. He's going to go on towards it. Cyanide comes in. Freddy should be able to slide away from this one. It's another bait again, a counter bait. Not going to catch on towards Cyanide this time with that cocoon, but Sven Skurin is going to march in there with his spiders. But SK is definitely expecting this camp onto Freddy. That's why he's <laughs> That's why Svenskorn is there always when something happens and why Freddy didn't use his uh, dash at all. He was just waiting for Fnatic to come closer and now they're actually going very aggressive onto Source. There's pressure on every single lane here. You can see SK trying to siege down the top. Dark Binding landing on the bottom. And again, the charm and damage from Peke landing on towards Jezz in the mid. Every single lane contested heavily by both these teams. And we actually saw how much damage Ari can still do as long as she lands the charm. So he gets the 20% more damage. And then the Q followed afterwards. We saw it actually took almost 50% of Jess's before. It's very scary. And so as he's in trouble, the Ignite's running. He may well go down from this one. Will he get taken down? One more hit. He needs to bite on. Sven Skurin makes sure of it. Jumps in there and gets the kill. So SK are winning out in this 2v2 duel. Renekton is such a strong combo. Fnatic can't actually do anything in the straight-up fight, a bit like we talked about earlier with Elise and how strong she is, and also the fact he's one level ahead of Cyanide. Oh, Peke is keeping a lot of pressure on this mid lane. The turret will go down. It's the first one of the game. And Peke completely dominating that mid against Jezus. Nidalee is a slow laner. She's fairly weak. We actually also had Sina in, into saying she was more or less just a caster minion in the early stages because you don't have any damage. You don't provide any CC to set up ganks. And it's more or less just been Peke, full control of the lane. And now with the turret down, we can maybe see him rotate somewhere else, possibly to the top lane, trying to kill Freddy. Well, bottom lane, we see Candy Pan again, two auto attacks on towards Reckless there. That is the bonus, of course, Lucian has if you get close enough. But very even between these two bottom laners, it is an assist for Candy Panda, which will make up that little gold deficit they've got. And you can see they've both gone for those bloodthirster builds items first off. Cyanide coming around to cover off Jezus. Just going to make sure he stays away from that tower. Cyanide, he just needs to get the XP here. It's a very good frame. He can get the entire wave because Peg is recalled to base. Actually have the DFG already. Very early pick up for him, so if he can catch someone out, he will have so much burst, and every single squishy member from SK will die as long as he lands his combo. Dark Bind, the animated, not followed up. Reckless more interested in making sure he keeps up those farming creep score numbers. And he has got 119 up against 106, so it's working well. Blue buff for Peke, and that one will be going across, no contesting from SK Gaming. We do see Jez as he's just gone back on himself out of Fiends and Holy Grail. So Jesses have some early magic resist and also the mana region he needs as Nidalee. Once we see SK actually grouping up, starting to throw down the spears, starting the whole siege they can do with Nidalee. It's a very good pickup. And now Sana coming towards his top lane. There's no pink ward, so he's not spotted out. No vision at all, but Sven Skurin seemingly with his sixth sense already heading this way. He's going to be taking that red buff to start with, but he is close by if needed. That red buff going down very quickly now. Generally just a very good start actually for Svenskorn. He's been having everything he needs to. He's actually going towards the Raves here, so he won't be joining in for the top fight if something should happen. Source is a little behind compared to Freddy. So we will see if they want to go for it or just trying to play it safe. 
feel now that he's gone that deep, he's going to go. go for it. He's going to catch on towards him. There it is. The subjugate goes down as well. So he's going to keep the pressure on towards him. Does use that dominance. He's running for his life. He's got the help coming up the river. Jezzes is making his way up there. The flash was used, but again, a flash from Soaz as well. So a good counter. Freddy making a great escape. And we actually see one of the issues for Trundle in this matchup because he puts up the pillar and then Renekton, he can dash through it. And instead, for Cyanide, he, I mean Source, he has to run all the way around it and it means he can't really join in instantly unless he actually flashes it straight away. Yeah,